run, my director likes, you know, getting me off guard. Yeah. But sometimes in journalism, it's allowed, you know, it makes the program look juicy and like, you know, the normal rehearsals. Anyway, it's the <coughs> touchline. Of course, it continues until 3 o'clock. My name is Maxwell Wasike. Due to public demand, we had to retain Nyambura Moridi for the segment <laughs> and try to chase Osoro. So he's wallowing outside there at the broadcasting house, uh, trying to catch up with what is happening elsewhere as he feeds us with the information. So this afternoon, especially for this segment, is the producer de facto. Anyway, we <laughs> continue with, you know, the show. Tyras Wayek is joining us. Big man, you've shaved the locks. What's <laughs> happening? Is it attributed to, you know, uh, hard living? <laughs> <laughs> First of all, Endo Soba Bogen. Eh? I've also changed my culture. Oh or my gone goodness. back to my roots. Anyway, yeah, I had to get rid of the... The locks, I know you love them to death. Uh, they reminded you of Saul Campbell. Yes. And for me, they reminded me of Kanun Wanko, whom I admire all the way. Uh, new year, new look. So new style. A new style, same old person. New way of doing things as well? No. Not necessarily? No, 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 I don't think so. I, maybe, but I don't think so. Wow. <laughs> what do you think about his new look? Uh, good. Uh, I like it. It but doesn't. It no, doesn't. It doesn't your your, 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 your like comments the about the his new look mm -hmm. don't necessarily mean yeah, no. I didn't like the other one. It doesn't mean that I didn't like the other the other style. So it 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 was all good, you know. You you do what you want, what you feel like, what you love, right? Mm -hmm. Big shout out to my <laughs> good friend Silas Morira Kinoti, an excellent engineer, man in charge of. Kenya Urban Roads Authority as Director General and a national supporter himself looking forward for, you know, <laughs> the Ghana's victory this particular evening against Burnley. You know, there was this stereotype mm -hmm. that, you know, English Premier League, actually European football is liked by, you know, the young people. But we've seen, you know, even corporate honchos and, you know, big people in these big offices having admiration for European football. Yes, the former Prime Minister is a so, self proclaimed Arsenal fan. Yeah. He's declared it in public. Uh, his his daughter his son Junior is an Arsenal fan. His daughter Winnie Arsenal fan. So that's an Arsenal family. The Odingas I really don't know. Yes. It's rumored, I don't know how true this is that um, President Uhuru Kenyatta is a Manchester United fan. I don't know how true that is. Uh Salim Davadi a uh, former deputy prime minister, Manchester United fan. So, I mean, it, it cuts across. English Premier League is big. Whether we like it or not, that's the reality of it. And who is it? Um, yeah. Uh, Prince William. Okay, he's not African. He's not Kenyan, but um, Aston Villa fan. Definitely. Of course, due to crazy schedule of this, you know, corporate honjos, it's good for our weekend to unwind their uh, mind and tough schedule and you know catch the interesting fixture but a challenge to engineer kinoti you can also try to watch you know the local action kenyan premier league of course we need to be patriotic as much as we enjoy you know the foreign best football we need to keep an eye on what's happening at home Nyamura, so arsenal against burnley you are an arsenal supporter yes <laughs> Yeah. And hopefully you will maintain objectivity wow. when giving your views. Of course, of course. As far as that clash is yes, concerned. Yes, yes, I will. <laughs> Burnley has been stubborn of late and, you know, Arsenal just seeking to maintain their recent mm. good run. Do you think they can... Yes, yes, I think because uh, the last uh, the last match with uh, Aston, uh, sorry, with Leicester City, they came from behind and uh, beat uh, Leicester City three one. But also um, looking at Burnley, uh, the last game they played against Leicester, which was just uh, their last match, they drew one one. So it means Burnley are really really stubborn, and they're going to give Arsenal a hard time today. But um. Um, I'm really not being an Arsenal supporter uh, that I'm saying Arsenal will win, but Ateta has really grown. He has improved the team. Though he said he's not yet there, he hasn't really come to, to, to the conclusion that he has really formed a good team, but 
he's is is very confident that he's going to to win this game especially looking at the last match against Leicester which was a really really nice game to watch especially the second half so Arsenal, I'm giving them this one, is, but it's an early kick of which we all say that it's not a good luck for for Arsenal or even for some other teams for reasons I don't know. But let's just see, let's see what what this game will bring. Actually, Arsenal up against Burnley, not happening this particular evening, but it's an early kick yeah. of tie coming away at 3:30 p.m. East African time. Sheffield United up against Southampton at six. Then of course Aston Villa will be playing at home against Wolverhampton Wanderers at 8.30 p.m. That's late kickoff match. And so is Brighton against Leicester at, uh, you know, uh, 11 p.m. Tiras Wayaki, mm -hmm. Mikel Arteta has been, you know, uh, under some sharp criticism following, I think it was in January, the team recorded a string of poor performances and he was subjected to, you know, a lot of humiliation. Uh, from you know, Arsenal supporters. Do you think that kind of criticism also pushes someone to deliver? That kind of criticism, at times it gets overboard, especially when they personalize stuff and they start wishing death upon your child. Or it, it, Social media especially can get overboard. But if we look at fundamentally what is just constructive criticism, I think that is fair and it is to be expected and to be encouraged. I know hashtag Ateta out was trending. Yeah. Hashtag Oli out for Manchester United has also been trending. It's normal. Uh, fans have to express themselves just as they will cheer you when you do well. They'll also cri criticize you a bit uh, when you don't do well. So that was well deserved. But the overboard stuff, no. I, Arsenal's graph reads like this. They, they, it's very unpredictable. But of late, they've been on a surge. And I think today they can just pull it off. Don't break me on this one because Arsenal are so unpredictable, they could lose. But uh, uh, Nyambura and I are of the opinion that Arsenal will win. Osoro, who's just walked out of studio, <laughs> thought otherwise and he thought Burnley will win. Burnley is the kind of team that has been upsetting Arsenal over the years. You see these teams that are sort of mid-level, second string s s Premier League sides usually torment Arsenal historically. But I have this feeling that Arsenal today will just pull it off. But they're over-relying on Oba, Aubameyang. And I think they need to, we need to see more of Pepe. Definitely. Of course, we're going to take a short, short break. I'm told that, you know, there is a little bit of technical hitch and there is something that needs to get sorted. So we're coming back with the conversation of European football and what is expected to happen in terms of, you know, the league fixtures coming up and even the trending headlines. So don't go away. Stay tuned. In EPL. In EPL. Touchline resumes, and this is the fan zone where we're discussing international football. Arsenal up against Burnley in the next few minutes, and you know, uh, team sheets are already out. Pierre Emerick Aubameyang starting up front as the lone striker for Arsenal, and so is Thomas Party, you know, getting into the team uh, for the first time. I don't know in how many matches he hasn't been featuring. And Bukaya Saka, the new kid on the block, of course, he's been receiving words of praise from several quarters for his, you know, scintillating. Play. But it's good to see, you know, Thomas Party, the uh, African international who featured for Atletico Madrid previously, mm -hmm. uh, getting into the team. But you see, people have been asking themselves, what did William and David Luiz give to Mikel Arteta? So that what? <laughs> because they are playing and yet they don't deserve getting a starting uh, place. That's the thing about Arsenal, you see, that's the culture there. It was a problem people thought would go away with Wenger, but it, Ateta has sort of retained it. I have 
one issue with Ateta also. And my issue is about why he at times leaves Pepe when Pepe is well and truly on form mm. and he leaves him out on the bench. Yes. So he tends to bring him in later on to rescue the team or he doesn't bring him in at all. Venga used to do that a lot to Kanun Wankuo mm. and to others, but notably to Kanun Wankuo. Mm. And he would bring him in when they really, really desperately needed that result. Mm. It, he'd do it in the Champions League, he'd do it in the FA Cup, he'd do it in the English Premier League. And it is so annoying. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, this is one of the earliest things a lot of us noticed in Mikel Arteta when he came through. Mm. And it, it's, it's one of those things you, you really can't do anything about. You can rant about it on social media, mm. but at the end of the day, the last and final decision is Arteta's. I wish I could attend one of those press conferences <laughs> and, you ask, and him. ask him that question. <laughs> yeah. Because he's the only one who can give mm. that answer. Of Tuchel of, of, of Chelsea is be best able to explain some of these things when he's asked, how comes you left so and so? And he just tells you today we're playing a high game, so uh, we need fast runners. That's why I've placed so and so there and left so and so on the bench. Mm. But Ateta is not articulate enough. He doesn't tell you, oh, this is why, no, 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 no. He, he just leaves you more confused than you are before you ask him the question. Eman James, of course, saying that, you know, obviously Manchester United is going to win 3-1 against Manchester City, no matter what, Man United <laughs> will win up United. Of course, it's indeed funny that Liverpool are no longer in the top six. You suddenly start showing the whole table, of course. That is Eman James talking to us via hashtag touchline Y254. No matter what, Man United will win. I think he's being <laughs> a fanatic. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. Uh, because um, Manchester City, they're right you can't, now. You can't authoritatively and confidently say that, you know, United will beat City. Considering City's yes, high-flying form. form. Yeah, and um, even considering, again, uh, City's defense. They're just uh, right now. I think they are, they have the best defense, and um, uh, looking like players like Gundogan, these are players that are scoring each game, and you, you just can't stop them. And uh, right now, they're top of the table. I think, if I'm not wrong, 14 points clear of Manchester United. So it's going to be a very interesting game. But as we always say in football, anything can happen. We might see Bruno Fernandes getting three penalties. <laughs> Who knows? Come on, United fans. If you are outside there and watching the show, this lady is mocking you. That, that, that uh, Bruno Fernandes will get three penalties and hopefully no, I'm they win. Just, I'm just saying, no, I'm not mocking. We, but, we're just saying. but Bruno Fernandes has been... There is this talk about him that... He doesn't rise to the occasion during big games. Yes. Yeah, yeah we have seen him in uh, several big games. We don't really see his performance. But um, performing very well in these other games. Maybe he tends to get uh, absorbed by other players. Maybe they know where to, 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 to get him th so that he cannot perform well. Yes. <laughs> My prediction on City United... <laughs> Not necessarily prediction. <laughs> she mentioned a critical point of, you know, uh, uh, defensive cohesion of Manchester City. John Stones and Ruben Dias yes. have been doing very well. We saw against uh, West Ham United last uh, Saturday, last Saturday, you know, even uh, John Stones scored. He scored a goal, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And Aguero couldn't score. Mm -hmm. Phil Foden <laughs> couldn't score. Uh, it, it came down to a defender. defender. But... It, it just goes to show you the technical brilliance in City right depth. now. Yes, uh, and the depth, obviously. But uh, for me, I think City's main strength, in apart from having a wide range of players from whom to choose, and a brilliant coach, and of course lots and lots of Not money, money. <laughs> <laughs> the, the City are very aggressive off the ball. Yeah. And you can clearly see that's part of the assignment. You lose the ball... All of you, like you say I'm an opponent player, mm. I get the ball, all I'll see is the sky blue of City <laughs> around me. It's a very intimidating thing. Stage yeah. fright right away. Lose the ball and they're back on the counter. City, and this is something that's not being said. We're talking a lot about their on-the-ball performance, but their greatest asset on the pitch 
apart from the other things I've mentioned, is their off-the-ball mentality. Mm. They are so threatening. It's like I was watching a documentary and a lion had gone out on its own, or rather on his own, and then he was surrounded by hyena everywhere, just hyena, hyena, hyena. <laughs> That lion was going to die, but another, uh, another lion came to the rescue. Mm. So really, that's how City are playing. They've got that mentality. Mm. You lose the ball, go for it. Yeah. Counter. I thought I should bring that up. That is City for you under Pep Guardiola. We saw him in you know, Friday press conference talking about you know, the title ambition of his team. But he's been downplaying <laughs> you know, that aspect of them being tipped as the favorites for the title crown. I think that's mental mm -hmm. uh, yes. game <laughs> for a coach who is aspiring to win the title mm -hmm. and there has been a lot of depth because if you see city play and you see their bench come on man <laughs> think it can be a first 11 for another team yes yes because they um i think when maybe one player is injured the first 11 we can easily get a replacement and he will fit in in the first 11 so i think uh, even seeing city's uh, bench you even scared because the player who is playing as first eleven is equally good as the player yes. sitting mm. on the bench. And as Chatria said, money is good. Money buys you good, good quality players. Are you trying to, to mean that we need to digress a little bit and say that you know mm. uh, <laughs> we've had this say <laughs> <laughs> people often use that you know peace and happiness mm. is better than money. Oh, no, let me tell you hmm. one thing, and yeah, I don't because know. You are a legend, <laughs> no, you're talking no, no. now. We can pay a lot of attention. Uh, no, um, just digressing a little bit. Yes, um, one thing I say, and maybe people won't agree, is people say money is not everything, yes. but money is the only thing. Yambura, you know, yes. put things it into is. perspective. I, I'm know, saying that because <laughs> what are you insinuating <laughs> that money is everything? Money is not everything, it's the only thing. Oh, money is the only thing. Money is the only thing. Because even, we are talking about even maybe the city. City has good players because of money. If it's not money, they wouldn't be having that type of player. They used to be mid-level. Yes, they used to they be. Used to and be the moment it was bought by these uh, tycoons... Life changed. Life changed. And uh, let's, let's give an example of uh, same, uh, like Arsenal. They have good players, but not really good players. Because even um, during times of Wenga, they were not able to purchase players because of budget issues. If money was there, I think they would be even having so many titles. But uh, City is, is good because they have quality players and it's because of money. They couldn't even win the FA Cup back in the day. Yes. But um, they've used the money well. Because also you have to use that money well. It helps when you have new owners who are mm. passionate about football, who love football, who have an idea about the way to go about it. Look at Abramovich at Chelsea. Immediately he came in, the first person he went for was Jose Mourinho. He yeah. knew mm. this is the guy, and then he gave him a free hand. First person Mourinho went for, Didier Drogba. And of course he came yeah. with Cavallo, Ricardo Cavallo from FC Porto. So yes, the, the money factor is a reality, but also the utilization of the money well yes. by the right players. Mm. Definitely I have to agree with them that money <laughs> is, is a good thing because when I was growing up, you know, Tiras Wayaki is a veteran broadcaster having pioneered, you know, sports banditry on Metro TV. Yes. Right? And channel and you one. see and channel one, our mother station, and you know, Tiras was emaciated during those days, but because of money factor, <laughs> ah. <laughs> he looks gigantic and, you know, very healthy indeed. So, I think that's attributed to money factor. And actually, Nyambura as well. Mm -hmm. We were in the same you, school. You too. And she was, you know, uh, not as she is. <laughs> you know, it's because of money. So, <laughs> let's talk about, you know, a Bundesliga. It's mm -hmm. a big derby today. Bayern Munich against Borussia Dortmund. Big stakes. Yes. Stakes are high. Yes, but Bayern is going to win. And this dominance by Bayern in Bundesliga, is it unstoppable? At the moment it is. It's not uh, it's unstoppable because looking at the quality of players uh, in Bayern and how they play, 
is just amazing and I don't think anyone can stop them. Maybe drawing or getting just a, a goal against them, but like defeating them, it's very hard. Uh, Ellen Haaland factor uh, at Borussia Dortmund, of course, he's been banging in goals and yes. he, the team of uh, Dortmund revolves around him. Do you think he can cause, you know, a nightmare to the defense of uh, Bayern, yes, it, yes, uh, he, he can, but I can't really say too much because you know, in football, we always say the best way of uh, of like maybe defending is attacking. Yes, so if yes, you have yes. players going in front, the likes of uh, Sergi Nabri, uh, up to now, let me just say, up to now, I'm so upset. Why Arsenal let go Sergi Nabri? Mm. Maybe we couldn't keep him because of uh, our playing system and all that, but he's a very instrumental player in Bayern. And having players like them going forward and attacking, it will cause uh, trouble for, for, for uh, Borussia even to score. Uh, Dortmund lacking the services of, you know, Jadon Sancho is, will be missing in action due to, you know, injury. Is it a setback? It could be, but I... I have I don't know why I have this strong feeling that Dortmund are the team that can really stand up to Bayern. And if, if you look at the Premier League, <laughs> uh, the, sorry, the German Bundesliga, they they've been surprises because the teams that have really stood up to Bayern are actually much smaller. Yeah. <laughs> but realistically speaking, and I know football is full of surprises. If there's any team that can stand up to Bayern. It's Borussia, but that's yeah. on paper. Mm -hmm. In practice, it's a bit different because Bayern have prepared to dominate for a very long time. They have three different cadres of players. They have the over 30s. Mm. That's Thomas Muller, <laughs> yeah. <in> Lewandowski. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and then they have the mid-20s. That's the David Alabas. Mm. And then now they have the, the late teens, early 20s. So you can see that is a serious succession plan. Yeah. When this top tier goes, the mid-level... There is proper mm. feeder system. Yes. yes, there's a proper feeder system. So to answer your question, are they going to be dominating for a long time to come? Quite possibly. When you look at their succession plan well laid out, mm. it, it's quite scary. A and it explains why they've dominated from the last decade we were in into this decade that we are now in, in spite of being written off. But they carry on and if they are the defending european champions club world champions that's a succession plan and they are normally ruthless just like indicated against the heavyweights mm. can they continue with the same yes yes um like even the last time they were playing the champions league they they really caused an upset for teams like uh, psg so uh, bayern and as as jira said bayern has really they don't have problems with transition even yeah. uh, with players because if you have uh, if you have different uh, cadres of uh, players you really have that choice of blending them well transitioning them well so they will have that dom domination in 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 the german bundesliga for a very long time and saying bayern is not uh, is not is unstoppable is just i think the right word to use at the moment. They are the first team so I've been in love jail of youth and experience <laughs> in Europe. Yes. The team. Yes. Yes. The, 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 definitely. And uh, just let me say, they're the first European team I <laughs> fell in love with because KBC was known as VOK then, vo Voice of Kenya, when we were growing up. Mm. And they used to bring the German Bundesliga every Saturday after Vitimbi. <laughs> <laughs> and we would just be there and you buy in Munich. They had, um, who was it? Karl Heinz Rummenigge. Mm. Yes. And you just loved it, man. Up till now, it's Bayern Munich for me. Although people try to force me to have a team in England. <laughs> so you support Bayern Munich? Oh, from when I was like this, black and white TV. Those <laughs> days we didn't have these color TVs. Mm. Black and white TV, if you want to change the station, you have to stand up <laughs> and go all the way to the <laughs> telly. And, <laughs> and, and, and actually, actually, there was no other station. What am I yes, saying? So yes. you had to, anyway, volume, anything basic on the TV, you had to wake up and go yeah. to the telly. <laughs> Uh, so yes, Bayern Munich for me. And then now uh, they stopped bringing German Bundesliga on VOK. So 
uh, England went to Liverpool. I fell in love with Liverpool and then somewhere uh, Liverpool died. In those days, I was a bit of a kid. So I used to like the, the team that's winning. I didn't <laughs> know about supporting the underdog. Mm. I wasn't that mature yet. So, uh, so <laughs> I went with Manchester United at some point, Arsenal, I don't know. But no, I've never changed. As far as Bayern is concerned, that one, because it was my first love, mm. basically speaking. <laughs> so you've been a football promiscuous. <laughs> Just uh, <laughs> no, 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 Look, At Atletico Madrid <laughs> up against Real, another, uh, you know, Mount Wattin derby tomorrow as far as Spanish La Liga is concerned. Stakes are equally high in that particular clash. That's like a final, man. That's very decisive. Uh, although Barcelona want to come in and spoil the party, uh, this one is very, very decisive. And Atletico Madrid, how is it? It's interesting. I think the last time I was here... The, the, those two sides were playing and I predicted, what did I predict? I think I predicted a draw and then Atletico Madrid lost in towards the dying minutes. So should I predict this time again or shouldn't I? <laughs> anyway, let me go in. Uh, I'll predict and say I think Real Madrid will win it. And then uh, uh, Atletico go on and win it. Anyway, I think Real <laughs> will win it. <laughs> I think Real will win it. Because Zidane always has a trick up his sleeve. He's the manager for Real Madrid. I think they call him coach in Spain. Uh, anyway, he's the boss, he's the guy. I think he always has a trick up his sleeve. You see the problem with Atletico Madrid, Diego Simeone, who's their coach, he shows, he plays, he puts all his cards on the table right from the get-go. So he, in that sense, he's tough, but quite legible. Zidane, waits and then he pulls that trick pop and Simeon has been missing has been missing uh, you know clinching the title just by a whisk as we speak right now of course Atletico are on top of the table with 58 points having yeah. played a game less of course 24 mm. compared to 25 that both Real and Barcelona Basin. have played do you think if they maintain the same momentum it's it, it's theirs to lose Yes, yes. I, I think Atletico are, are in a place right now that they are, uh, their possibilities of winning the title is very much higher yes. because they are they're lying top of the table and with one game less played. And I think th I just have something for Diego Simeon. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't know what it is. Because but of his design suit? Maybe. Maybe that's part of it. But I, I really... <laughs> The same. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so I really I really like Diego Simeon's approach to games and this particular one for Real Madrid, I think Atletico are going to win. Hey, today I'm disagreeing yeah. and <laughs> with Nyabura, Nyabura is disagreeing with me. <laughs> Not really yeah. from the same Usually yes. we, eh, we go, we we go, go like this together. Yeah. Too. But today we are, I think COVID is a disruptor, <laughs> a big time. Eh? Maybe. Now just a few minutes away before we wind up the show, uh, let's speak about, you know, the impact Thomas Tuchel has had on Chelsea Football Club since, you know, replacing Frank Lampard who was sacked over, you know, poor performance. The man is yet to lose a game <laughs> and he has had some, you know, uh, good show at the helm. Come on, is he the person Chelsea was missing? Lampard didn't really poor, poorly perform. Uh, as he, he just had a, 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 a bad run of form. Yeah. But generally, he performed better than we expected. Actually, I'm one of those who are of the same view that he ought yeah. to have been retained. Yes. And we had that discussion last time. I was anyway, now we've moved on to, to Kel, whether we like it or not. He's there. Yes. And he's performed just as I expected him to. Remember, he's German. German tacticians are brilliant galore. Jürgen Klopp winning Liverpool their first league title for 30 years. German. Uh... Who else is German apart from uh, <laughs> uh, to, to Kel? Anyway, that just tells you why in the German Bundesliga, German Bundesliga teams are coached by Germans. The German national team is coached by a German. And they have beautiful, long history of performance at the highest of levels, both for club and country. To Kel is absolutely brilliant, absolutely competitive. He cannot stand mistakes he cannot stand losing he cannot stand lack of effort and he's been shortlisted for manager of the month of february 
of course there's Pep Guardiola who's won six out of six last February in his English Premier League games. But I'm 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 voting for Tukel for manager of the month because he's new in the Premier League. Pep has been around for years. He's new to the Premier League and he just took to it like a duck takes to water. He's performed very well, hasn't lost a single match. Of course there have been a few draws last February, but he's won through and through I, I i like the the competitive spirit i fear his eyes when he unleashes them <laughs> like this i just love his will to win he's my february man uh coach of the month in the english premier league just like they say life of a person can change within the seconds you remember when frank lampard was at the helm how you know Anton rudica was being abused even being mm. told to uh, leave the club but immediately thomas tuchel joined the club he's been commanding a starting place yeah. at the defense of the team and we've seen how some players have been asked from you know the starting 11 the likes of ben chilwell mm. uh, getting replaced by marcos alonso who was also on the verge of leaving the club i don't know how has it been like for him in terms of your own assessment because we've watched a lot of games him uh, on the touchline but it hasn't been you know a consistent lineup is he yet to uh, get his first 11 because it's been sort of rotational policy with, you know, even Callum Hudson mm. or Doi, you know, getting uh, matches day in, day out, unlike before. I think it's normal for uh, every coach when he comes into a new team to try different players so that he can identify where that player fits. So I think it's normal for him not having a first 11 uh, at the moment because he needs time. And um, for Lampard, I think it was so unfortunate that he was let go that early. They, they just bought new players. He needed to, to really uh, get them, to know them well. And um, we all know that Abramovich is not, uh, is not a patient <laughs> person. So let's hope that uh, the new coach continues winning matches. Uh, not start losing because mm -hmm. we all know what Abramovich will do. But Tuchel is a good coach. Let just let's just wait and see what he's going to do with the n good good players he has uh, at his disposal. And he brings out the best in yes, his players. Yes. You notice Zuma has not messed up mm -hmm. once yeah. since Tuchel took charge. Mm -hmm. Not even once. He's been top notch. He used to make a few mistakes. And Thiago Silva was not costly. playing of late, right? Under Lampard. Yes. Wow, it's been a good show indeed. Every Saturday, one, two, three, touchline. We talk about matter sports, both local and beyond, cutting across various sporting disciplines without segregating anything. And of course, if anything is happening in your neighborhood, you can always catch up with us on Saturday and tell us the, that football game that is being played in Mashinani and give us the fixtures. Of course, we will, you know, uh, proudly announce them. On air. But let's continue with the conversation. Hashtag touchline Y254 to Asike Maxwell at Ms. Mirumbi Osoro at Y254 channel. A lot is happening even in Rugby Kenya Cup. Match day two is on and Kenya Premier League also. Several weekends uh, fixtures are earmarked to take place in various pitches uh, across the country. And even English Premier League is on with City Derby tomorrow. United up against City separated by a 14 point. Uh, difference and City looks like they are the favourites for the title. Crown Atletico up against Real tomorrow and tonight. Bayern against Borussia Dortmund. Disclaimer, the predictions the two gave do not necessarily <laughs> reflect the position of Y254. So if you happen to be an investor and you place your bet and it happens to go haywire, don't <laughs> blame on us. Uh, after all, it did come from me. <laughs> Anyway, Yambura, it was good to see you. Uh, interesting insights from you, mm. as usual. Mm. And so is, you know, the veteran broadcaster, <laughs> you know, Tira Zwayaki, who has shaved his locks and he says new year, new style, and new way of doing things. It was a pleasure seeing you once again. Because pleasure is all mine. Thank you. You had missed the show, man. You sucked me. <laughs> <laughs> now you've been reinstated. <laughs> God bless you. Good weekend. Keep safe. And always enjoy, you know, the good game.